I've made a lot of pretty drastic changes to my workflow, um, especially my coding workflow. And one of those is being switching from Visual Studio Code to Vim, and specifically NeoVim, which is like kind of the better and upgraded version of Vim. Now, I think it's definitely improved my workflow by a large margin. But the thing is, is that it requires a lot of depth and time and effort to actually learn. Now, I think for most people, they just want to hop on their text editor and start coding. They don't really want to mess with anything like LSPs or key maps or anything like that. They just want to start coding, which is completely understandable, right? But I think there is some greatness in using Vim. And today I'm just going to go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of Vim. So you can kind of see if you want to switch to it or not. Now, a huge advantage of Vim is that you now actually have control over your workflow. You now have control over your text editor. So what that means is that anything you don't like or anything you do like could be implemented, right? Or removed. And it's so, so great. And it's also so fast, right? It's so lightweight. You don't have any bloat, right? I've, uh, I've recently just checked back on Visual Studio Code on my laptop. Uh, just to see how it's like now and there's so much AI below so much random stuff you don't need um, With Vim, it's very bare bones and if you do need something you just add a plugin and that's it Which is great and also of course if you put in that little tiny bit of effort into actually learning the Vim binds right like if you put in that little bit of effort the results are actually so amazing like now I'm able to code, I I, well, I won't say I will be able to code 10 times faster, but I definitely am working through my code a lot faster than, let's say before Visual Studio Code, right? Where like I'm switching through tabs and stuff, and like I'm trying to find a file that I can't find, right? With like, with tools like Telescope and stuff, it's so, so easy now. It's so easy to just, you know, grep something, look for something. It's too easy. And the great thing too is like, Anything you want to implement, you can implement, right? If there's a task that you keep on doing that's repetitive, you can make a key bind for that. You can make a key map for that, right? Like it makes it so, so reliable because you know exactly how your text editor is going to act based on what you tell it to, right? Across all your systems. Now, I think a lot of people will argue that Vim has a very steep learning curve, which I do think is true at the beginning. But I think once you do, once you do get over that curve, it gets quite easy actually it gets quite rewarding too like um now i'm just i'm effortlessly just going through my config and you know i know exactly where to go you know what i mean and with the plugins too i mean there's really no excuse like with stuff like mason where you can just easily you know download a language server protocol it's so so simple to set up and like even uh stuff like tree sitter it's it's literally just a few lines of code that you have to put in and that's it. That's really, that's it. And you know, the Vim and Linux ecosystem is so big. So like you can even find pre-built configs for Vim, right? Like personally, I started using lazy Vim at the beginning. Now I've kind of, you know, put together my own config based on creators I see and stuff and, you know, just kind of put it into my own config. But there's a lot of pre-built configs that you can use where you don't really need to mess with a lot. You just kind of download it and you just start coding just like Visual Studio Code. Now, interestingly enough, I think Vim in a way could be a gateway into actually coding if you've never actually coded before, which I think is super cool. Now, before I started using Vim, I actually wasn't really coding that much. I noticed that it just being my own config and it being so satisfying to just work on my code actually made me want to code more which is super, super sick in my opinion. Now, again, I think if you're just someone who wants to code and they don't really care about their text editor, you know, you do you, I, if you're coding, that's all that really matters, right? But I think if you do have the time, I think learning Vim could be a really useful tool and it could really expand your workflow and just make it a lot easier to get things done. And again, I, I think for the most part nowadays, it's not really something too com complex either, right? Like there's tons of videos out there. Uh, I can link some uh, below in the description. Super, super simple to set up. Now, also the great thing is too, is like if you're someone who doesn't want to make the complete jump to Vim and you're kind of stuck on VS Code still, and but you want to make that switch, right? There's actually a great, great extension on VS Code. I forgot the name. 
It's something vim, but you can use you can uh, use vim commands on VS Code like you were using vim. And I think this is kind of a good gateway into understanding how vim works and basically just getting used to the vim keybinds, which makes transitioning a lot lot easier. Now I would probably plug in my own config. But the thing is, my config is really just, <laughs> to be honest, ripped from a bunch of creators. So I'll probably just reference those creators configs instead. Because um, I don't want to just steal <laughs> what they have. So yeah. And you know, I think for the most part, Vim isn't really about saving those, you know, seconds off your time of coding. I think most of it is actually just making it satisfying, which makes it a lot easier to code in my opinion, and I think could be useful for a lot of students who kind of struggle to start coding. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's about all I really wanted to say. Um, before I end this video, I just want to say I'll be starting live streams soon. Uh, basically, just some um, study deep work live streams if someone wants to join. Um, I'll be making a schedule for that. And once I do make that schedule, it'll be put in the description of this video. So yes, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, have a great day.